So in this video, we're going to be simplifying thirds, taking complex thirds and making them simpler. Let's take a look at some examples, jump straight into it. Here's my first example, the square root of eight. Now, if I look at eight and I go through my square numbers in my head, eight is not a square number. So we've got a problem. How am I gonna simplify this if eight is not a square number? What I should do is look at eight and say, is there a factor inside of eight that is a square number? So thinking, yes, four times two equals eight. So now I can see the number four is a square number and that's important. Let's see what we do next here. Now that I've been able to split the square root of eight into the square root of four times two, I can deal with this four because four is a square number. And I can take it from here and move it outside of the root symbol because the square root of four is two. So when it comes out of here, it's gonna turn from being a four into being a two. So that moves out of here, the four becomes a two. And what's left over? This is the bit that's left over. So the final answer here is two root two. Now what that actually says is two times square root two. Two times square root two. By moving it out of there, that's what we end up with. Two times the square root of two. Now you can type this into your calculator and you can type this into your calculator and it will give you the same answer both times. The square root of eight is equal to two square root two, two times the square root of two. Let's take a look at another example. The square root of 27. Now, I think about my square numbers. 27 isn't a square number. Is there a square number that is a factor of 27? Something times something makes 27 and one of those somethings is a square number. Think about it, do it in your own head. Okay, something times something, nine times three. Nine times three makes 27, and nine is a square number. So, I can take this nine and move it outside of the square root, and I'll end up with when the nine comes out of the square root, the square root of nine is three. So I'll end up with three root three. Okay, that's simplifying. I'm gonna do a couple more a little bit quicker this time. Okay, so square root 48. How am I gonna figure that out? Now there's a couple of different ways to solve this one, but I'm gonna go at it the fastest way possible. Okay, thinking of my square numbers, is there a factor 48? that will, um, that will is, are there two numbers that when multiplied together will make 48, but one of them is a square number? All right, you have a think in your own head. This is what I'm coming up with. 16 times three. Now, if you didn't come up with that, that's okay, but 16 is a square number. So, 16 is gonna come outside of the square root and when 16 comes outside of the square root, the square root of 16 is four, and that's gonna be four root three. Now, that's one way to solve that question. I've gone, I've seen 16, and I've gone 16 times three, move that outside four root three. Now, if you looked at 48 and you didn't see 16 straight away, that's okay. I'm gonna show you a second way to solve the same question. Okay, square root 48. Same question as before. Hopefully I'll end up with the same answer, but I'm gonna tackle it a different way. I look at the square root of 48 and I think two numbers, one of them has to be squared. All right, have you got one? Here it is, four times 12. Four times 12 is 48, four is a square number. So I can take that four, I can move it outside and I end up with two root 12. Hmm. 4 root 3, 2 root 12. They're both root 48? Yes, but remember I'm simplifying thirds, and this can be simplified further. So at the end of every question, you need to look at your answer and then say to yourself, can this 
be simplified further. So two numbers, one of which is a square number, when multiplied together make 12. 2 root 4 times 3. So now I'm doing this in two stages. This 4 is going to come out here. Now when it comes out, the 4 is going to be a 2. But that's going to be the 2 that was already here times the 2 that's coming out of here. 2 times 2, root 3. Finally, 2 times 2, 4, root 3. So you can see here it was very, very straightforward, but most people when they see 48 don't think 16 times 3. They'll probably think 4 times 12. So in that case, you've got to do it in two stages. One more. So here I've got the square root of 250. Now, 250, if you see something that ends in a 50 or a 25 or a 100, you should immediately be thinking 25. So, root 25 or 250 is equal to root 25 times 10. 5 comes out, 5 root 10. Then, make sure you look at the 10 and say, are there two, is there a square number that I can get out of 10? In this case, there's not, so you can leave it right there. All right, one more, root 72. Uh, look inside of 72, ask yourself, what can I find there? Um, think, 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 think. All right, I think I've found a four. Four times 18 is going to make 72. That's what I found. You might have found something different. I see the 4, I move the 4 out, and I'll end up with 2 root 18. Now stop, think, 18. Can I find a square root inside of 18? I think I can. 2 root 9 times 2. Now again, take the 9, move it out of here, I end up with, finish this off in the right colour, 2 times 9 comes out and becomes 3, root 2. 6, root 2. Okay, so you can see it's another two-stager there. Um, practice them, see how you go. There was a different way to do that in one step. You might want to stop and think about how that could have been done in one step instead of two steps the way that I just did it there. That's thirds, simplifying thirds. It doesn't matter whether you do things in one step, one step, or two steps, just that you get to the answer eventually. Give it a crack.